In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a simple tool that will allow you to make some fairly complex radius cuts in the mill without having CNC or a rotary table. First, I'll show how to make the table. Then I'll demonstrate how the table works. At the end of the video, I will attempt to make an 8 inch diameter bending die for 1 inch tubing on the rotary table. It's made out of just three pieces, a top plate, a bottom plate, and a piece of one inch cold roll that gets turned into a custom shoulder bolt. The top plate can be just about any size, but it needs to be thick enough to drill and tap for work holding clamps or T-slots. The bottom plate can be smaller and should be narrow enough to fit in your machine vise. If your plates are flat, you don't need to do anything to them. If they're not flat, they should be fly cut. The only thing that needs to be done to the bottom plate is to drill a hole for the shoulder bolt. The top plate needs a press fit hole for the shoulder bolt and a counter bore for the head of the shoulder bolt. The top plate also needs to have holes or slots for work holding. I just do a grid pattern of tapped holes for toe clamps. The last thing that needs to be done to the top plate is to drill and tap some holes in the side of it to screw a handle into. The bolt can be just a standard shoulder bolt. You would just need to drill a hole in the center of it. I don't have one the right size, so I'm just going to make one. This is the centering hole that needs to be in the top. This shoulder bolt is 3 quarters of an inch in diameter with half inch thread and a 1 inch diameter head. I finish ream the center hole to a half inch. The parts can now be assembled. The first thing is to press the shoulder bolt into the top plate. With the shoulder bolt pressed in, we can now put grease in between the two plates. This is especially important with aluminum plates. With the plates together, the nut can be put on. It needs to be tightened enough to cause drag between the two plates, but still rotate. Now some sort of a handle needs to be put on. I use a piece of 7 8 round stock that gets screwed into the side and then put on a bicycle grip. One last thing I do is to bolt a block on the bottom so that it's easier to hold in the vise and can be put in the vise at an angle for doing a tapered radius. To use the table, stick it in the vise and zero out to the center of the table if you need to be accurate on your radius. If you're just rounding your corners, you don't even need to do that. Usually, you'll have a hole at the center of your radius so you can use a centering pin to align the part. With the tight fitting centering pin, you can usually get away with just one toe clamp at the other end of the part. Then rotate the part through the end mill using the handle. You'll be able to feel how much you can take off each pass from the vibration in the handle.
So to do this outside radius on this triple clamp that I'm making, I first pre-drill the endpoints of the cut using the digital readout. That way I don't need to make any type of degree measurements in the rotary table. I then put it in the rotary table. With the centering pin, it only needs one toe clamp to hold it. With the endpoint pre-drilled, this radius takes less than a minute to cut. This is an inch and a half wide cut with a half inch end mill. This is an example of a 360 degree tapered radius cut on the homemade lever operated rotary table. The spending die is 8 inches in diameter, 2 inches thick, and a 180 degree bend for 1 inch tubing. I pre-notch the die on the ends because I want to stop and start at 180 degrees. I've cut 45s off the corners to make it easier to radius. Here I'm taking a 1 inch deep cut on a 4 inch radius. With this large of a radius, you would not want to attempt a climb cut at all. Only go against the direction of the end mill. To cut the tube profile for the die, I will need to mount the rotary table in the vise at 90 degrees. To do this, I will bolt a longer block on the bottom of the table to stick in the vise. I also have to move the lever handle off to the side so it will clear the mill head when rotating vertically.
In this situation, rotating the die downward through the end mill works best because you're going against the spiral of the flutes. The other way, it tends to want to grab it and pull it in. Although not quite CNC quality, it's not bad considering it was done with a hand lever on two plates held together by a shoulder screw.